You could come forward, please. PE 13-144. Um, welcome to Council. Uh, you have 10 minutes. Please uh, uh, say who you are and who you represent in uh, 10 minutes. That's interesting. What? No. You're not allowed to know what the conflict is? No, go know? ahead. You have 10 minutes. I'm just asking you, is that, is that a question? No. Not allowed to know? Good. Fair enough. Uh, my name is Chad Novak, and I'm here today representing the Saskatchewan Taxpayers Advocacy Group, a truly grassroots group of individuals from Saskatchewan that are pushing for accountability and transparency from their municipal governments. You can find more information about our goals on our website, chadforregina.com. I am here to address the recommendation before you today re regarding the requested five-year property tax exemption for the Regina Trades and Skills Centre. First off, I would like to say that we are very much in support of providing financial assistance to any agency or nonprofit that is able to provide a valuable community resource that contributes to our overall social well-being. Without agencies like this, we are confident that companies would have a much harder time finding the skilled labor that they are required or that they require to answer to the demand that has been created over the past few years. However, we do have some serious concerns regarding the fair and equitable treatment of similar organizations, and we think that we can all agree that the goal of property tax exemptions help reduce the financial burden on these kinds of organizations. Now, with that said, I have found through my research that the City of Regina, through the former Re Regina Regional Economic Development Agency, has established an, or has an established policy that is used to ensure that all such agencies nonprofits and businesses alike do get the same fair and equitable treatment in order to maintain a level playing field for everyone. I would like to note that we have a few concerns regarding this application specifically, and it is my hope that these concerns can be addressed to the taxpaying citizens of Regina tonight before any final approval is given. I should note that it is not clear in the application as to what factors were actually considered when providing the previous tax exemption and what factors are being considered for the current tax exemption in the past before you tonight. Now, my first concern is that of financial necessity. I am quite confident that most nonprofits only continue to exist with as much community support as possible. And without that support, it would be near impossible for them to provide social benefits that they do. I note that the RTSC receives a substantial amount of financial assistance from various levels of government funding already. And this would lead me to wonder, would they really have a hard time providing that training that they do without this requested property tax exemption? Without seeing the financials that are noted as being included in their letter, it is very difficult for the general public to determine just how essential this request of tax break is to their continued existence. Secondly, the policy that is outlined in, on the Re Regina Regional Opportunities Commission website specifically states that they are to be the first point of contact for any property tax exemption requests. And they are to evaluate each request based on a variety of predetermined criteria. Now I note that this request, along with the previous request from 2011, were not sent to RROC, but directly to your tax assessor, Don Barr, and to the Finance Administration Committee, respectively. Now, in this policy, it, states, it specifically states that the RROC would handle requests all the way through to putting a recommendation before City Council. I can see this as a mere oversight for an average taxpayer, but given the close relationship of the RTSC and the City of Regina, I would, one would reasonably expect this protocol to be very well known, and thus raises some serious questions as to the fair, fairness of these requests. If, in fact, these requests did go through the RROC, then certainly you shouldn't have a problem with providing this information to the general public, including how the RTSC placed on the evaluation matrix, which determines just how much of a tax exemption an organization would get, and for how long. Not knowing much more about RTSC than what's, on, what's in the report and other publications, I did a quick calculation, and it would seem that they scored pretty low on that matrix, and at best, would be eligible for a two-year, 25% property tax exemption. Thirdly, now I may have missed it in my research, and I apologize if I did, but it does not appear that the RTSC have actually applied for a renewed property tax exemption when they moved or relocated to their new facility. Now, pardon my ignorance, but I would expect that a property tax exemption be renewed and 
we applied for the, to a new property when it's with a different assessment. Through my research, I did find it quite interesting that the Saskatchewan is the only province in all of Canada that actually provides their municipalities with the authority to grant tax exemptions on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, to its credit, this does allow municipalities to set up their own guidelines in order to, in theory, attract more business investment by offering further incentives to set up shop. Now, through this same research, however, I also found that we already are extremely competitive tax-wise, even before any property tax exemption. One certainly has to wonder if this is even a needed incentive to bring business investment into our currently booming economy. Now, we continue to hear about how there is only so much money that City Hall has to go around, and it would seem that you would want to maximize every tax dollar that you have access to. Now, with that said, would it not be in the taxpayer's best interest to keep a very close eye on what property tax exemptions are provided and ensure that the original request qualifications continue through their given exemption period? We saw that what can happen when you don't monitor this in the recent situation surrounding the district brewing company, pretty much reconstru reconstructing the entire building that was previously exempted. Unfortunately, the tax exemption was only caught very late in the process when they applied for a permit. Now, this is a real concern and leads one to wonder just how many tax dollars are being quote-unquote left on the table with these exemptions going unmonitored. Now, finally tonight, specifically to the parking lot in the application today, I know that typically land ownership is a requirement nationwide in order to get a tax exemption. It's even noted in the report before you tonight, but I don't see an explanation as to why the landowner hasn't applied for this and then passed those savings on to the RTSC. Now, I apologize if I missed that in my review. Thank you for your time, and I will gladly welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions? Nope, I see none. Thank you very right, much. Thank you. John Klein? Okay. Just communication. I'll make the recommended disposition and communication. Yes, thank you. Can you second it, please? Councilor Bryce? All those in favor? That's carried. Let's move on to the report. CR 13176. Thanks, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I rise to bring forward this report in regards to the um, site uh, 1269 Albert Street. This is a request for exemption for the Niagara Trades and Skills Corporate. Um, by, uh, by way of the recommendation before us that this be a five year property tax exemption provided to the land at 1269 Albert Street, owned by Suncor Energy and leased to the Regina Trades and Skills Corporate. Uh, they are occupying this uh, is used for trades and skills training. Uh, this will be sent to parking for that center. Uh, part two, that the city solicitor be instructed to prepare the necessary agreement and bylaw for approval for us here at City Council. So that would be what the second part. Now, Mr. Deputy Mayor, just uh, on behalf of this, uh, I have to say that uh, this is located within my ward and provides uh, a tremendous amount of value to the community. For those uh, those folks who are looking to get into the trades, so obviously there's opportunity there for uh, for people who may not have uh, already the training or the ability to go to science or the financial wherewithal to go there. So they can apply here at Skills and Trades and be immediately placed into employment. Now these aren't the average folks from across the city. Most of these people are going to be coming in from the inner city. Uh, many of them uh, may not have the, the financial wherewithal to go through the traditional system that we receive. But Mr. Deputy Mayor, what's most important here is that the folks that are going through this program have a job. They're able to go back into the community and provide for themselves for their family. This is a tremendous opportunity for us to support them in this. A tremendous amount of good work is done by skills and trades, and we need to applaud them for that. And frankly, give them the opportunity to allow those members who own vehicles vehicle to place the park. Why would they not for that? Maybe ludicrous not to do it. Obviously, this is a great decision. It was approved unanimously by the committee when we asked for your support on helping help those folks help themselves to make this a better community. Perfect. I'll uh, let you close at the end, and Councillor Young. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, I have, excuse me, I have a question about taxes. Do we tax schools? Do we tax school property? Mr. Barr? Oh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, there's 
statutory exemptions for schools, churches, and hospitals. So schools are not exempt. Our schools are exempt from taxation. Okay, yeah. This is a school. And no, this, it's not. This, this is a school that brings high school students in, um, and it's part of their high school program, and they get high school credits for it. So this is a school, and it should be treated as a school just like all the other ones in the city. Thank you. Council Rice? Council Young and I are on the same wavelength a little bit. I was going to ask, are there any other schools in Regina that we do not um, have a tax exemption for? What about Luther or Gabriel Dumont or Syast or any of those? Well, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. The, the legislation for schools and tax schools were uh, operated, owned and operated by the two uh, major school boards. Uh, but also there is a section on independent schools, and if the schools are registered as an independent school with the province, they will also be exempt. In this particular case, because of the uniqueness of the program, although they are getting uh, high school credits, uh, there's also a trades component, so it's not registered as an independent school, so that's why this one uh, is a requirement uh, that they have We had a similar situation with the Canadian Bible College, as they were an independent school that wasn't registered, and also they got an exemption through the uh, Council Thank you for that information. Um, I was also, um, I had another question, but now I, it's not coming to me, unfortunately. No, it's gone. Councilor <laughs> Don? I'm just going to make a, quick, a comment based on uh, what I just heard. Uh, there are, there's a category in the province called historical schools with the college, uh, Alphamore College of Notre Dame fall within that category. So that by nature of the legislation, they also are exempt under that category of being a historical school. Thank you. Any others? Councilor Murray. I'm sure you have a question. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mayor, I do have a question. It's actually Councilor Bryce's question. Because after she sat down, her derailed train got railed again, so she's back going. Yeah. So uh, the question is around um, if the lease agreement that's in place with Suncor right now were to terminate before that five year period, five months from now, uh, Uh, through Mr. Deputy Mayor, that's a 99-year lease that went with the sale of the adjacent property. Uh, and if the lease was terminated, the, uh, the uh, part of the terms of the agreement for the exemption are that it must be leased to the uh, Regional Trade and Skill Center. And if that lease terminated, the exemption would be terminated as well. So just further to that, then, if the Regional Trade and Skill Center were to change its name or its mandate in some way, would that affect this summer? Uh, if the building gets sold and something changes, it changes. The agreement for this particular property for the land would require that it's, it continue to be used for the Regina Trades and Skill Center as a training center uh, and used in conjunction with that Great. So, again, same thing if it got sold, change hands in any way, shape, or form. I appreciate that very much. Thank, Thank you, and, uh, and to my council colleagues, I would encourage them to, to support this, obviously, the work that's done by the uh, Trades and Skills. Uh, began in a much, much more modest environment that actually crossed the street now a little bit. Um, they outgrew their space and have not created now continue to provide uh, tradespeople to our community. Of course, we have a very growing community that uh, requires people, whether it be for renovations or for new builds, uh, anything in the construction trades today is a great opportunity for our youth uh, to participate and, uh, and allow them to become a part of our community to help build those homes that today there are builders out there selling. I uh, encourage everyone to support us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Murray. All those in favor? Those? That's carried. I'm going to ask the mayor to come back. Mr. Greaser, you're up next uh, on 145.